The tech guards of the Mechanicus. Frightfully sinister characters, those ones. All those blank stares and ominous clicking noises. Very shady, if you ask me. Anyway, yes, we do have a file covering their infantry troops and formations. I have taken the liberty of loading it into the viewing screen for you. Please enjoy. The faceless infantry legions of Mars. They march upon a million worlds in search of precious knowledge. But what units make up this endless red tide? What warriors does Terra's sister planet send out into the galaxy to do battle with the Xenos, the Heretech, and the Mutant? The Skitari, that's what. These ludicrously augmented psychotic cyborgs stand ready to crush the enemies of the Adeptus Mechanicus, fielding weapons so deadly they even damage the user and all manner of slightly comical looking but extremely lethal constructs. Join me as we discover the various forces that comprise the Skitari legions, and I will tell you about the unit I find fascinating and utterly terrifying all at the same time. So let us explore the Skitari legions of Mars. Mars, unique among almost all worlds of the Imperium, sister to holy terror that endured the long darkness of old night. In those millennia of madness and disaster, Martian leaders knew that their knowledge must be preserved at all costs. The Archmagi also knew that they must protect as well as preserve, and for that they would need weapons, soldiers, and war machines. Awesome and terrible war machines. Plasteel and adamantium incarnations of the Omnissiah's wrath that stride the battlefield, obliterating any who dare defy the will of the Machine God. As mighty as these demigods of destruction are, the Mechanicus still required foot soldiers. These men and women, hardy and unquestioningly loyal, march in lockstep to the inaudible commands of their superiors. The Martian infantry, or Skitari as they are known, are not in fact an army of robots, as much as their appearance might seem otherwise. They are heavily augmented humans that retain some of their independence when compared to the drooling servitors we see shambling around. Due to their extensive modification, Skitari can excel and survive in almost any atmosphere. Skitari are also known for their near emotionless nature as a result of both their brain surgery and psychological conditioning. Because of their condition, Conditioning, Skitari are so loyal to their tech priest masters that they will even blindly kill one another if ordered. In battle, Skitari fight with near robotic discipline and base their firing vectors and positioning on mathematical formulae guaranteed to bring about maximum success. While the Imperial Guard focuses on broad, sweeping assaults, Skitari units generally focus on maximizing their strength against vital enemy units and installations. While Skitari fighters do not require any boost in morale, they do receive regular enhancements from combat drugs that cause sudden bursts of energy, strength, and regenerative power. However, many of these drugs are extremely dangerous and cause horrific side effects within mere minutes of their use. Skitari squads are led by a Skitari Alphas, those amongst them who have received the highest level of cybernetic augmentation. These individuals are held in high esteem within Skitari culture and are highly respected individuals. Let us examine some of the various Skitari units fielded by the Mechanicus. Hyperspists are the basic type of Skitari warrior. The word hyperspist is used to cover the basic line infantry of the armies of Mars. These troops are heavily bionically enhanced, replacing their weak, fleshy eyes with unblinking mechanical replacements and mentally augmented with psycho-conditioning and neural data processing upgrades, but are otherwise equipped with basic weapons such as las guns. Any who looked for technological consistency in Skitari augmentations would be sorely disappointed. Skitari Warplate these armoured plates are intended to be worn for years at a time. Recombinant cells secreted beneath a superdermal layer of ceramite alloy recycled moisture from the wearer. This liquid is transformed into a gelatinous unguent that coats the inside of the suit, preventing slow abrasion of the wearer's body while also providing some protection from the harmful effects of their own weaponry. 
Vanguard. Skitari Vanguard are so soaked in radiation from their radium carbine weaponry that even to approach them is to invite death. Should their foes survive the worst of the shooting, critical levels of rad poisoning may still be achieved by the very proximity of the Vanguard, who will look on in silent interest as an enemy who thought that the worst was over stumbles, chokes and dies of radiation poisoning. Eventually the radiation burns through even their heavy armour plating slowly poisoning them. Mindful of the harsh terrain of Mars, their legs have been removed from the knees down, replaced with cybernetic augmentation. Their augmentations and radioactive conditioning have allowed Skitari vanguards to be deployed to the most hazardous war zones the galaxy has to offer. Radium Carbine The radium weapons are so volatile that they do eventually kill their wielders. Their antique beauty belies a singularly vile function, not only to strike, but to render the battlefield as deadly as the rad wastes of Mars. Each weapon's bullet cylinder is so thoroughly bathed in radium that a volley can cause a localised rad storm. Those inside such a storm soon find their flesh blackening and sloughing away. Rangers Rangers are hunter-killer infantry. They will hunt their prey across the galaxy for decades if needs be. Given the harsh terrain of Mars, much like the vanguards, their legs have been removed from the knees down and replaced with cybernetic augmentations. This has given them legendary stamina, and they are known to pursue a foe until it absolutely exhausts itself. They do not deploy via drop pod strikes launched from above, nor by sudden teleportation into the enemy's midst, but rather by stalking their quarry for solo weeks or even months until it is unable to run any longer. Once the designated target is in their sights, the air is filled with the thump and crackle of galvanic weaponry, even as the Skitari continue their frantic advance. The stench of electrocuted bodies is never far away. The Mark IV Arkan Galvanic Rifle, modelled after the hunting flintlocks of Mars's distant colonial past, is a precision tool in the hands of a Skitari Ranger. Its bodywork is that of an antique, with a polished wooden stock and curricles that echo the sandy seas of Mars's deserts. Yet the Galvanic servitor bullets inside are incredibly advanced. When such a bullet strikes home, it causes all the potential energy of the target to burn out in a killing blast of a electrical force. The Sidonian Scatros are perfectly engineered snipers. They stalk into position on stilt-like legs before standing deathly still like cyborg watchtowers. As the Scatros scan the battlefield for targets by using their all-seeing Achillean eye, the Scatros can zero in on vulnerable quarries and dispatch them with the use of either their Radium Jazeel for infantry targets, or a transuranic Arquebus for penetrating the armour of vehicles or the hides of terrible monsters. Transuranic Arquebus Known for their range, precision, and efficiency, these weapons fire a shell of depleted transuranium. This allows it to puncture straight through a tank. The wave of pressure created by the projectile will also pulp any biological matter contained within. As we well know, when one of the Emperor's angels is mortally stricken in battle, they may be entered into the sarcophagus of a dreadnought to serve even after death. Well, did you know the Mechanicus have a similar process? It transforms a Skitari that has been critically injured into something known as a Sicarian. And if you thought the Skitari were unnerving, just wait. Sicarian infiltrators are the brutal Skitari scout troops, renowned as perhaps the most sinister warriors of the Mechanicus. Heavily augmented into more machine than man, the Sicarian infiltrators are a hideous, frightening strike force. When hunting, they emit from their domed helmets white noise and photonic strobing that fills all audiovisual spectra with static, leaving their foes disorientated and helpless. Enemies fall, deafened and blinded by the scree of brutally disrupted audiovisual assault, and some battles are known to have been decided before even a single kill has been confirmed. Infiltrator squads can bypass enemy defences with ease, though not because of their stealth, but rather the disruptive wavelengths they broadcast when on the move. Regular Skitari warriors sent to fight alongside infiltrators are given null codes that can transmute their disorienting wavelength frequencies, allowing for efficient combined arms assaults. 
Sicarian battle armour. As agility is of paramount importance to the long-limbed killers of the Sicarian Brotherhood, Sicarian infiltrators go to war clad in Sicarian battle armour. This is made up of a multi-layered alloy that, though thin and flexible, provides admirable physical protection. This alloy, informally known as Agium, acts as a capacitor that harnesses the energy of incoming attacks and disperses it harmlessly across the wearer's bionic frame. Sicarian Rust Stalkers Initially an elite assassination squad, the Sicarian Rust Stalkers proved so effective at the art of killing that they were repurposed as frontline, physics-manipulating commandos. Their transonic weapons hum and resonate with sickening efficiency, passing through the strongest armour as if it simply didn't exist, though the effect of the damage often takes several seconds to manifest. They also make use of the dreaded Mind Scrambler grenades, which harbour the egg sac of a Cathelan Electrogenesis squid. When detonated, the resultant surge of bioelectricity causes heavy neural trauma in living creatures and artificial sentiences alike. These weapons are often used with little consideration for unaugmented humans in the area, and I'm afraid earplugs just aren't going to cut it. There are also Skitari that do not fight directly under the banner of the Mechanicus. The Collegia Titanicus employs Skitari forces for close protection of their venerable god machines, making certain no pesky Xenos may interfere with the comings and goings of the almighty engines of war. These groups are known as Secutarii. The principal type of warrior employed by the Secutarii are Hoplites, a defensive force augmented and equipped to resist infantry assaults in the most hazardous of battlefields. Their strength comes from both their absolute discipline and from their energy barriers generated by the Chiropatris field generators. The power of these surgically implanted generators is amplified into their mag inverter shields, which allow them to take a massive amount of enemy firepower. In counter-attacks, hoplites are deadly and use their arc lances to bathe the battlefields in torrents of artificial lightning, as their cogitator-assisted protocols allow them to operate both in dispersed skirmishing lines or as escorts for titans. While Secutarii Hoplites are the anvil on which lesser swarming enemies of the Titan Legions are broken, Secutarii Peltasts are the hammer that strikes those who would try to outmaneuver or ambush the god machines. Using powerful galvanic casters unseen in the larger Imperium, their principal tactics centre around concentrated firepower to saturate target areas in order to neutralise any threat that may be concealed as well as to root out enemies that are too small or dispersed for titans to eliminate. Lastly, I'll cover the cavalry. The use of mounted troops is not only restricted to the Imperial Guard. I'm looking at you, Krieg. The Mechanicus fields some terrifying cybernetically augmented beast mounts and somewhat odd-looking mechanised walkers, allowing their scouting and recon troops to cover great distances and react swiftly to changing dynamics on the battlefield. The Sidonian Dragoons. These vehicles are equipped with a near perpetual motion iron strider engine, making them a technological marvel that nearly violates the laws of thermodynamics. The first Sidonians were warrior explorers that settled on Mars in areas of acidic mist millennia ago. In the many wars that have haunted Mars's past, those with stilt augmetics could stalk these mists and yet live. Their elevation allowing them to escape the worst effects of the acidic fog while remaining hidden from the enemy. The Sidonian Dragoons echo these tactics, using incense exhausts to admit a mist that confounds foes before they mount their deadly charge. The walker itself is piloted by a monotask servitor, allowing for the Dragoon to give his full focus to the fighting at hand. In battle, Sidonian Dragoons are often equipped with either a Taser Lance or a Radium Jazeel. The Iron Strider Ballistarius. These machines function as mobile artillery platforms and are gyroscopically balanced. These walkers also have downlinks that provide them with a comprehensive understanding of their enemies, making the Iron Strider Ballistarius's deadly accuracy legendary. These walker teams, escorted by Skitari Rangers, tirelessly search the galaxy for high-value targets. Their mechanised mounts can walk through the most hostile terrain for years on end without stopping. When Iron Striders approach 
approach a war zone, they are downloaded with all the Mechanicum's knowledge of that particular battlefield. The locations and appearances of enemy commanders stand out in these data links, making them easy to identify and eliminate with twin auto cannons or las cannons. Cerberus Raiders. Cerberus Raiders are Skitari who ride cyber beasts into battle. Promoting a Skitari to the maniples of the Cerberus Corps is a great honour. Riders are maglocked into gyro stabilised positions to ensure combat stability while riding swift mechanical constructs with razor clawed limbs that allow them to easily manoeuvre over the shattered terrain. Cerberus Raiders are long range scouts and outriders who excel at outflanking the enemy and picking off unprotected assets. Advanced ocular arrays implanted into the riders skulls are new spherically linked to their mounts, ensuring maximum accuracy, while olfactory sensors and a suite of augury equipment makes them effective trackers. Cerberus raiders wield a wide variety of weaponry including archaeo revolvers, galvanic carbines and power swords, while their mounts are equipped with viciously clawed limbs. As if the Cerberus Raiders weren't deadly enough, I present my personal favourite unit in the Legions of the Red Planet, Cerberus Sulphurhounds. These units are monstrous, bloodthirsty beasts with a drug fueled cyborg killing machine on the back of it. They are drawn from the most aggressive Skitari clades. Within their forge wields temples, they patrol enclosures as fell guardians, while on the battlefield they serve as shock linebreakers. Once released by their tech priest masters, they smash into and through defensive positions before circling back to pick off any survivors. Cerberus Sulphur Hounds are equipped with a variety of weaponry including Phosphor Blast Carbines, Phosphor Blast Pistols and Power Mauls, while their mounts wield Sulphur Breath Flamers. As you can see, the military forces of Mars are more than capable of defending their sacred forge world from any threat facing them throughout the galaxy. The legions of red-robed warriors march in unison, never flinching, never refusing an order, and never suffering the enemies of the Mechanicus to live. Martian culture is clearly visible in their unique designs and weaponry stemming from their long separation from terror during the Age of Strife. Though they may be unnerving to most with their cold, unblinking green eyes and despision of all things meaty, I for one would much rather have them as allies than enemies. Until next time fellow seekers of knowledge, the Emperor protects. The units and military forces of Mars's Adeptus Mechanicus are but one of the fascinating subjects covered within the records of the Adeptus Scholaris. You are welcome to return any time to learn more about the Imperium and its vastness. If you wish to view another file, please select one from the choices shown on your data slate now and consider liking and subscribing as a way of showing support. Blessings of the Omnisire upon you.